Hello and welcome back to Cody's Radio Workshop. I say welcome back if you haven't been here before. Welcome. If you have been here before, welcome back. On the bench we have the Roberts R900. FM, AM, mains and battery portable. This one, this particular one, actually works really rather well. There's no problem with it at all. However, we're going to take it apart. We're going to chop some bits out and we're going to put some extra bits in. When this set was born um, it worked really well but what they found over a period of time was repeated use of the on and off button which you would do when you're turning it off or turning it on every day, several times a day maybe repeated use of the on and off switch whilst the mains cable was connected actually burnt out the little teeny tiny copper contacts inside the on and off switch. Roberts quickly realised uh, that they needed to address it because they were getting uh, lots of flack quite deservedly about the problem so they issued a modification a supplement to the technical data sheet technical data sheet I have here and here is page one of the supplement and page two. Now this details a modification and it says that the first production receivers were fitted with a three and a half millimeter jack socket. This one's got the bigger one, a 6.35 millimeter jack socket. So this is a later one. Um, lots of things were changed. Uh, and from serial number 13566. Now this serial number here is 12,000 and something. We'll get to that. Um, serial numbers on the bottom. But it's in the 12,000s. So because it is an early one, earlier than 13,566, we may well have to do the modification. There's no way to tell whether it's been done unless we actually take this apart and have a look. So if we take it apart and it has been done, happy days, short video, we'll take it apart, have a look, find out it's been done and then we'll pop it back together and you can have a listen and then we'll all go on our merry way. If it hasn't been done, this involves cutting some bits out and putting some other bits in and it's not for the faint of heart, uh, it's not something I enjoy doing is cutting uh, printed circuit tracks on a circuit board uh, when the set's already working but this may well turn out to be a preventative measure doing the modification like I say it's not for the faint of heart but it is slightly easier than changing the actual on and off switch and all the hassle that's involved in that so without any further ado we'll start to take it apart like I say, I've got the data sheet here to refer to. I'll pop that up there just out of your eye shot so that, I mean, I know how to take these apart, but we'll do it by the book so that you can see and hear what we're supposed to be doing. So, dismantling, remove the base. On the bottom, we've got a screw here, which needs to be turned just a quarter turn, and it will spring up like so. Pull and lever the base away. Now as I mentioned, let's try and get you in, there's the serial number for the set, it's R900 number 12470, 12470. So it is an early version and just looking inside there's absolutely no way to tell whether anything has been done without taking it apart and having a look. So, we shall carry on. Remove the flange head screw at either end of case above the handle fixing. So there are two screws, and this is an early one because this has brass screws in it. The later ones have the stainless steel dome head ones. Uh, this has the brass flat ones only ever seen one other set, one other R900 set with the brass screws in. So we'll take that out, pop it on one side, the same with the other side to remove the screw. E 
ease chassis out from top of case to extent of leads. So we tip it upside down, give it a shake, nothing happens. So this time we need a longer implement like a screwdriver and push from the inside being very careful where we put the screwdriver to push it and that should it has moved it Aha. the one thing that they didn't mention was to slacken the aerial well not slacken it, remove the retaining screw for the aerial and then remove it so I shall be writing to Roberts about that ok perhaps not and then and I'm back so what I will point out now is and I'll go through the modification from the sheet as well remove and discard capacitor 59 which was fitted here this was capacitor no this is the position for C59 you can see just there so I removed C59 which was a 470 UF cap remove C53 which was a 1000 UF cap and fit in C59 position so this capacitor here used to be here and the instructions on the modification suggest that you remove C53 and fit it in C59 position it says, in the event of increased noise, fit a 2UF 25V cap in the C53 position. Well, I don't know at the moment about any increased noise, uh, so I'm not going to do that. Now, on the other side, the next step was to sever the print on the circuit board between the on-off switch pin 3 and long wave switch pin 4. So, following here, I have severed there and there. Sever the print between the on off switch pin 3 and long wave switch pin 1, uh, which is this one, because that goes up to pin 1 there and then fit wire links on on off switch pins 3 and 6 so that is this link here and pins 2 and 5 which is this link here so that's that now done there's no other modification required unless we have some what they call increased noise so we're going to put this back together and discover whether it still works because it did but this is what I class as preventative maintenance uh, stopping the on off switch issue occurring at any point in the future this should uh, last now for many 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 years just a point to note on the inside of most Robert sets you'll find a signature and it is usually the person responsible for the final assembly I can't work out what that is, that could be Jan but just a point of interest so now we're going to put this back together I'm trusting the work that's been done I'm not going to power test this until it's back together usually I would but I've done a couple of these before and they've always gone well it's just a uh, when you're cutting tracks 
on the circuit board like I've done here, it is a bottom clenching moment um, because you're, you're essentially voluntarily damaging a circuit board. Um, but that's what the modification requires, so that's what we've done. I am not going to bore you with putting this back into the case. I'll put this back into the case now and I will be back when it's back together. I will switch it on while you are with me, while you're watching too. So you will know the very instant that I do too. Well actually I'll probably know before you do because I'm here and you'll get to see this probably a couple of hours after I've uploaded it. Anyway, you get my drift, I will catch you shortly. And welcome back. Here we have the R900 back together again. Um, a little bit of an issue. Uh, one of the power wires that goes to the power plug on the uh, mains adapter inside uh, was trapped underneath the speaker and that must have been done from the factory and that had caused the power uh, plug on the main board to bend. Um, unsurprisingly. I've resolved that anyway, it's all back together now and we're just going to do a power test. Bottom clenching moment again because I genuinely don't know whether this is going to come on or not. So, magic fingers. Nice. <laughs> Should be able to pop that on and off switch now as much as I like. Rain later, good, occasionally moderate. There's the test tone set at 100 megahertz, but it's showing us 99 on here, so uh, we'll have to get into this and just correct that. This is with the aerial down, by the way. I've popped the aerial up. We should get better reception across the spread. Or maybe not. That's a test tone on 99 again. clock. It's a beautiful sounding set. BBC News at one o'clock. This is Mike Powell. The World Health Organization has declared the coronavirus outbreak in China a global health emergency. At least 100 people have died and almost 8,000 have been infected. 150 Britons have been flown from Wuhan. So, there we go. There's the R900 um, with the modification complete. Lovely looking set. I've got one of these in brown. I've also got, I believe I've got a red one. Um, I, th I think that the red one that I've got is put away for a a rainy day, part of my own collection uh, and that has an original box with it but this is a green one, I didn't have a green one I wanted a green one, so I got a green one it needed the modification doing we've done that, it sounds nice, looks good thanks very much for watching if you've liked what you've seen, don't forget to click like if you have uh, subscribed, thank you if you haven't subscribed please do I have plenty more of these radio shenanigans coming up. Um, I'm not quite sure yet which is going to be next, but I have several to uh, pick from. Well, many and several to pick from. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one.
Thanks very much for watching.